When do you know? When do you know that you are moving on with God? When do you know that you are moving forward with the Lord Jesus? When do you know that it is time to go into the deeper things of the Holy Spirit? That it's time to get serious. That it's time to start doing some water only fasting. Yeah, things that are tough, things that require sacrifice to get into the deeper things of God. No longer the milk, the meat. When do you know? When do you know in your life on this earth? When do you know that it is time to go into the deeper things of God? To count the cost and go forward no matter what to set your face towards God. When do you know that? I'm going to tell you when you know it. When turning back is no longer an option. Somebody write that down. When turning back is no longer an option, you know that you got to go forward. Now, we've talked about this a lot in here, that this part right here, that there is no neutrality in the entire universe. There's none. The Holy Spirit electrifies the fence, knocks when he's present, no straddlers, no straddlers on the fence, either on one side or the other. And unfortunately, a good portion of the Christian world is in the world. They got a foot in their religion. They got a foot in the world. And they're pretty content because we live in America and times are good. Life is wonderful until tragedy comes. And then they have no intimacy with God and he's not their friend for real. And they can't call on them to do nothing. And they run to their pastor because they can't figure out why. It's not meant to be like that. It's not meant to be like that. So when you look at yourself and you say, OK. There's no way that I'm going back to the type of Christian that I was before. The type of Christian that I was because of everything that I've been taught my whole life. Now that I know these things about this full gospel, about the truth of the scriptures, that this is to be walked out in demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit, that water only fasting is a big part of this life, a big part of it. Yes, that spending time with God is a big part of this life. Spending time in the word is a big part of this life. Now that I know these things and I know that the supernatural is right there for me to grab. That casting out demons is right there for me to grab. That laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover is right there for me to grab. That speaking the word and telling a story about Jesus and seeing 15, 16 people come to Jesus a night. It's right there for me to grab. Every It's all right there for me. There's no going back. There's no going back for Coolis. There's no going back for Ricky, Rosalind, John, every name that I see, every person that's in here tonight. There is no going back for you. But when do you know? Because if you're in here right now and you say, well, you know, sometimes I stumble. It don't matter about stumbling. The Bible says that when you sin, that he is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins and wash you clean in the blood of Jesus. First John 1, 9. That letter was written to Christians. I'm talking about going back to the type of person or type of Christian that you were before you were exposed to all of what's been going on in here for the last five or six months. You know, there's no going back. So therefore, you got to go forward. Let's go to the scripture right now. And I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story right now. Peter, our man, Peter, from the Bible, we know how he was. He walked with the Lord for three and a half years. He saw him raise the dead. He was with them on the Mount of Transfiguration. All those things went through all that with the Lord. And we know that he denied the Lord on the night that he was betrayed. We know that he did that. Everybody knows that story about Peter. But what a lot of folks don't know is what I'm getting ready to tell you right now. Somebody dropped this in the chat. Okay. We're going to go to John chapter 21. Somebody drop it in the chat. John chapter 21. I'm going to tell you what's happened now. Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus has risen from the dead. And the fellas done seen him. They've seen him and they've talked to him. 
Jesus is risen from the dead. They've seen him and they talk to him. They know he's alive. They know he's risen from the dead. And then he goes on. And what happens? What happens? Do they run around like their hair's on fire and, and just ain't no going back? We have seen we have seen the risen Lord. We saw him crucified. We saw him put the nails in his hands. We saw him put the nails in his feet. We saw him stick the spear in his side. We know he's dead. We know he's buried in the tomb. We know he rose from the dead on the third day because we've been hanging out with him. John chapter 21. Watch what happens. Verse 3, John 21, verse 3. Somebody drop it in the chat right now. I'm going to read it to you. John chapter 21, verse 3. Simon Peter said to them, he's talking to all the guys. You know he's like the de facto leader. He's talking to everybody, and he says, I'm going fishing. He said, I am going fishing. He was going back. He was going back to what he knew. He said, I'm going fishing. And he wasn't alone. And the other brothers said too. They said, well, we're going with you. Now, remember what they was doing when they met Jesus by the sea. They was fishing. Now, here, three and a half years went by. They seen people raised from the dead, leprosy healed instantly. All these miracles, the death, the burial, the resurrection, all of it. They've seen him alive. After he was dead. They don't know what to do. You know why? Because you either got to go forward or backward. There is no standing still. There is no neutrality. I'm teaching you a deep spiritual principle right here. Don't ever be confused about this. There is no neutral ground in this entire universe. It's all being fought over every single millisecond of every day. Of every day. And if you're standing still and you're not pressing forward with the Holy Spirit and with the Lord, you're going backwards and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. And Peter was going backwards. And he was taking the guys with him. He's just like, man, we just go back to what we know. We just go back to fishing. And that's what it said. We're going back to fishing. And they said, then they said to him, we are going with you also. And they went out and immediately they got in the boat. So here they go. They are going fishing. And then the Lord appears to him again and he makes him some breakfast. All right. Now I want to show you something. Go to the book of Acts. We're going to the book of Acts right now. Chapter two. Starting at verse one, book uh, Acts chapter two, verse one. Somebody put it in the chat. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rush of mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What just happened? Yep. The Holy Spirit just fell. And the Holy Spirit filled everybody present. And you know who was one of the ones that got filled right there that was present? Peter. Peter was one. Peter was one. And here is a man that gave up everything in his life. We understand he was a married man, according to the scriptures. He gave it all up. He followed Jesus for three and a half years. He saw the miracles. He, he betrayed the Lord. He saw the Lord massacred, dead, buried in a tomb, rose from the dead three days later. And he saw the risen Lord. And he still went back to fishing. But from this moment forward right here, he never went back. And from this moment forward right here, from this moment right here, he never went back and he was willing to be crucified upside down. 
in the name of Jesus. Y'all, I'm telling you right now, we opened up on January the 1st of this year with a message about this year and the importance of you cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You have got to cultivate this intimacy with the Holy Spirit of God. You have got to spend extra time speaking with the Holy Spirit. Please, please, please listen to me. This is he who is on the earth now. The Father is in heaven. Jesus is at his right hand in heaven. This is he that is on the earth right now. He is the Holy Spirit of God. And he is all around you and he is everywhere all the time and he is living in you. And this is he who you need to walk off when you don't know what to do or what to think or what to say or how to pray and go spend some time with him and go talk to him and say, Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me. Lead me and guide me, Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm a little stuck right here. I really don't know what to do. I don't want to. I don't know what to say. I'll be patient. I'll be patient till I hear from you because I want you to lead and guide me, Holy Spirit. I need this relationship with you. I love you. I understand that you are the power of God on the earth. I understand that you are sent here to be my guide, to be my guide, my helper, my comforter, the very wisdom of God living in me to lead and guide me through this entire thing called life, to show me the people that you want me to talk to, the people that you want me to pray for. The decisions that you want me to make in family circumstances, in business circumstances, in all circumstances, Holy Spirit, I want you in it. I want you in it. This was that moment. This was that moment when Peter had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. He didn't go back to fishing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You know what he did? He got up and he preached a sermon. He got up and he preached a sermon and led 3,000 people to the Lord. And they all got baptized right there. Come on, man. I pray I'm preaching to somebody that somebody here has got this right now in the name of Jesus.